It's essential that you know how to run the numbers when you're looking at a potential income property investment. It's also important that you learn how to look beyond the numbers for the opportunities or pitfalls that might be lurking in the background. I'll show you how in several case studies that are part of my course in real estate investment analysis. I invite you now to view a brief excerpt from the residential property case study. In our last session, we rescued ourselves from the brink of disaster by realizing that there were a lot of operating expenses, as well as potential vacancy and credit loss, that we had not considered when we made our original estimate of the value of this property. So we reconstructed the information and made a new APOD form, filling in what we felt were reasonable estimates for the first year operating expenses and vacancy loss so that we would come up with a realistic estimate of net operating income, to which we then applied a capitalization rate of 9%, which our due diligence had shown was the appropriate market cap rate, to come up with an estimate of value of about $1.5 million. Now, if our role here was to be an appraiser and to come up with a market value, I think we could reasonably say our job was finished we've come up with a reasonable estimate of what the property is worth today. But we're investors and worth is kind of a tricky bit of terminology because what it's worth to us as investors is really tied very much to how well it will perform over time. And so the next step in our evaluation process is to estimate how we think it might perform over a longer period of time and whether that performance meets our investment goals. So we're going to do a pro forma analysis of both the operation and eventual resale of the property.